Any concerns about copyright infringement when using prompts? Oh God, this topic. <laughs> I feel like I'm in the minority, but I have a very strong opinion. Uh -huh, yeah. And I'm extremely against the way people are perceiving what AI is, what it does, and what should be copyrightable. First of all, it's like standard US international law that co like style is not copyrightable. This exists in art, in architecture, in anything. If you like take a style of something and you do something completely new, but imitating someone else's style doesn't matter. You know, the idea that style can be copyrightable is kind of ridiculous. And if we live in a world where that will actually be uh, persecuted, then you are never going to have any continuation of culture. Because every element of culture is a continuation of the past. Everything we do as creators and designers is inspired by the things that we're taught, the things that we've learned, the predecessors, the people that came before us. As I say, there's no postmodernism without modernism. One thing came after another. So you get into this gray area of, of what the hell you can even take ownership of. Yeah, you can take ownership of the object, but if you take ownership of the style, that's a, you know, a can of a worm that you don't want to open. Yeah, that's a pretty good point. It's like, what, what is a style, you know? It's pretty hard to define. Can you patent a style? No, I mean, yeah. there's so many architects that base their style off of other architects, you know? Yeah. I, I don't want to point any fingers, but just for an example, uh, M80 Architects kind of got a lot of sort of work carried on from Zaha Hadid's style. Mm -hmm. And then Zaha Hadid, she herself was heavily influenced at her early phases by uh, uh, Malovic style. Mm -hmm. Malovic, the Russian supremacist movement. Yeah, this type of argument, I think has more um, grounds in the art world mm -hmm. and even less grounds in the design world because yeah. the things that we design are supposed to work in real life. You know, whatever style we adapt into a new massing, a new building, the bulk of the work is not the the concept images, not the AI, is how you, you know, actually implement it. How you measure all the doors and the windows and the handrails and how they work at a, such a minuscule scale, how you panelize the flooring tiles and all these things, which is really the bulk of the work and requires a whole team of people to do. Any concept is just a concept. Yeah, it's true that if the culture is going to move around, we're going to have to move past the, these kind of limitations, I think. <laughs> I think people are really stuck in the past with, mm -hmm. with regards to this uh, conversation because we had many tools in the past that work just by us using it and then doing our own thing out of it. But the AI is kind of like, because you're able to prompt and query another artist, our traditional mentality is to think that, okay, that sounds like it's copying because it's, it's taking data from um, other people. But uh, I think that's a very 20th century way of thinking on a 21st century technology because we have to reframe the way we think about what what is a tool, what is uh, plagiarizing, and what is um, AI. If you actually look at nuances, what AI does is it, it pattern recognizes, which means it does what humans do. If you ask the AI to scrape the data of whatever architect or artist, what it does is it takes the data and it learns from it, and then it produces something new out of it just by its correlations of pixels. I mean, that's literally what artists do. If, an, if I tell an art student to go into a Van Gogh museum and learn all the paintings of Van Gogh and try to replicate Van Gogh's style but paint something completely different, would Van Gogh should have copyright to the student's work who um, learned from his style? The obvious answer is no for that student. The moment you replace the student with a machine that can do what the student is doing but at a much more efficient rate, then people start to have a sort of a lapse in sort of the way they think about this. Because machine does it so much better, they feel like it's a different method, but it's not. It's learning. Machine learning is learning. And I think that's the point I want to try to make because sadly, I think majority of the people in this argument is trying to think about it in a traditional sense and be on the other side of the argument. And I've seen so many laws right now that are being kind of implemented. What you're doing is creating this sort of over commodified system in a world where free information becomes more more free flowing and i think we have to prepare for a society and a world that information proprietorship is no longer the essence of how we drive our economy it should be the idea the ideator 
the owner, the architect, the creator, the person who typed in the concept, the person who thought about what should be brought into existence, regardless whoever style they would like to prompt into. I think the world is not ready to think in this way. And majority of people don't think in this way. Uh, honestly, most of the arguments I saw were pro pretty much on the, the side of protecting the artist. But the, the way you frame it, it's true that, you know, it's it's a style. It's not a specific piece of art. It's, so it's yeah. totally different. And I yeah. could see the, the limitation and it's not necessarily even helping the artist. 